Hey, it's good to see you. I have a red spot on my nose. I have no idea why. Well, I tell you, I do this thing every night in the winter time, and it's probably unhealthy and awful, but I've been doing it since I was a kid. Um, I have a little space heater in my room, and I like to sit right in front of the space heater and listen to podcasts or, you know, do crossword puzzles or whatever. I've been sitting in front of the heater for a little bit, and I get, I get rosy cheeks. I have no idea what's going on with my nose. I don't know why there's a red thing on my nose. But anyway, I had a shower. My hair is plastered to my head. I've got to brush it out. Before I do, um, I use this product here. I cannot remember. I think this was in a BoxyCharm box. It came in one of the boxes. It's called Altre uh, by We Me or something. Eight in one CBD multi-purpose nutrient mist and styling aid. I put a little bit of this in my hair before I brush it out. It's a really good detangler, and I have been. I've been using this bottle forever, and it's still at least half full. I mean, I, I only use like like three or four sprays of it, and I just kind of run it through my hair. I did use shampoo and conditioner in the shower, um, but I like to take my wet brush and kind of, you know, brush it out a little bit. And this, that 8-in-1 uh, CBD stuff is a wonderful detangler. Yeah, it's, it's pretty great. I like it. So what have you been up to on this day, on this Tuesday? I haven't been up to much. It's been kind of a quiet day. We made fiestadas. Oh my God. I had a, I had a bigger lunch than normal because I had those fiestadas. I have, I have just felt sluggish and kind of crappy all day since then. Like, I don't, I don't even know. I don't normally have a heavy lunch like that, but I have just felt kind of yucky all day because I never, I never eat stuff like that, especially because I had two or three pieces of that, that round fiestata. The, the rectangular one was kind of yucky. I didn't really like that one, but the round one was really good. Um, I'm going to apply my nighttime products. I got a band-aid that's trying to come off. I went to an aerobics class this evening and it had a lot of stuff where you like burpees and mountain climbers and stuff where you have your hands down and I guess bending my fingers back and forth so much has messed up my band-aid and then when I took a shower that was just like the kiss of death. I've been using this Alginist triple algae eye renewal balm around my eyes. I like it. It's pretty good. I use my little paddle to get it out because I don't like sticking my finger down in there and I you know people say we use the back of your fingernail even that just bleh, it just skeeves me out I can't stand it so I take a little bit and I put it around my eyes I ordered several more bottles um well, I didn't really order them I found them on eBay really cheap like because people get this stuff in their beauty boxes and they don't want it so they put it on eBay I have two extras and they were they were really cheap so I did that um, next I'm going to apply some of this I used to use Chamonix Esotique RF with Matrixel I use that stuff on my face at night forever I found this product that I actually like just as well if not a little bit better this is Earth Harbor mermaid milk nutrient glow moisturizer and this also came in one of the beauty boxes and I really like it I do. It has re it has replaced my Chamonix stuff. Um, I think I have some left that I need to use up, but I'm not going to order any more. It's kind of a greenish gray color. <clears throat> it smells a little weird, but you get used to it. So I just put that on everywhere. You just kind of slap it on. I'm just wiping it off the spatula. My rosy cheeks will go away in a little bit. Plus, I took I took a very hot shower a little while ago because I, I was chilly for some reason. I was cold. And the hot shower made me feel better. So, so that's mermaid milk. And then, of course, I use my Gold Bond Neck and Chest Firming Cream. And this stuff is really cheap. Um, 
You just put it on your neck or wherever, and it's really nice. Oh, and then I have to take my vitamins and brush my teeth, and then that's it, and then I can go to bed. The Window World guy is supposed to come tomorrow morning between 8 and 10, which means he will be here at 10 o'clock. That's what they did to come put the storm door in. I still can't shut both doors. You can shut one door or the other, but not both. It's because the, the door thing, the doorknob on the storm door is hitting the deadbolt, um, part of the deadbolt thing on the front door. So that there's not enough room to shut both doors. I have determined that that's the problem and I'm just gonna go ahead and tell the guy when he gets, maybe I shouldn't say anything. Maybe I should just wait and see what he says. Just wait and see if, you know, what he, what his analysis is and what his diagnosis of the problem is. I don't know. I did, um, somebody on my Facebook page recommended that I call a corporate office and they gave me the phone number and I did call them today. I did file, I did, I didn't like file a complaint, but I told them what was going on. I explained everything that has happened so far and I told them like, I have pictures and video of everything this entire process start to finish. And here has, here's what my experience has been with Window World of the Triad. And I talked to a lady who actually seemed to give more of a shit than anybody I've talked to in their Greensboro office so far. I mean, like the guy that installed the door. You know, I pointed out, I didn't know yet about the doors not closing, but I pointed out, you know, the threshold looks awful. It was covered before I had a, you know, there was a, a board over it for the threshold so you don't have this ugly exposed brick. And he said, well, you know, this door doesn't come with that. I said, but I paid to have all of that redone and covered. So I am really unhappy with it and I think it looks awful and I'm not happy. And he, he just goes, okay, ma'am, well, thank you. All right, and then he just left. I'm like, okay, thank you. These people suck. So I t anyway, I called the corporate office and I explained everything that was going on. And uh, so somebody from the corporate office is supposed to look into it and call me back. I haven't heard from anybody yet. I called them this morning, but I don't know. I guess we'll see if anybody calls me back or not. Maybe they will. I don't know if it'll do any good or not, but I figure it's worth a shot. Now, that's not all I'm going to do. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to see how it goes tomorrow and then go from there. Um, I, you know, at this point, there's not really a whole lot more I can do right now. So, but I did talk to somebody at the corporate office and let them know about the situation. And at least the lady I talked to, it, she at least did a better job of pretending to care. And she agreed that it did sound pretty messed, pretty messed up. So yeah, maybe I'll get somewhere. I honestly don't know. I don't know. I'm just depressed. It was kind of like the countertops. By the time I got my countertops done, I had been through so much crap with the, the company that did them. It's like, I don't even care about the countertops anymore. I look at them and they just make me sad. Like, I don't even give a shit about these countertops anymore. I don't even like them anymore. <sighs> but yeah, even now I look at them and, I'll, and I, I still remember like, you remember what a pain in the ass it was to get these countertops? Wow. That was something. I try to be a positive person, but nobody can be positive all the time. I mean, sometimes I just, I just have to complain about something. But what, what, what can I tell you this good? Um, well, it's, uh, it's Tuesday and my son has an orthodontist appointment tomorrow. I'm getting my hair done Thursday. I get my roots done and I get a blowout and, and they make it all pretty. And, uh, and then after I get my hair done, you'll see multiple videos of my face so you can see my hair because I like to show my hair off. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really tired. I've had a hard time going to sleep at night for some reason. I, I just like I just cannot go to sleep. I'm wide awake until like 1 or 2 in the morning. And then my alarm goes off early and then I don't want to get up. And I'm sleepy all day and it's just, I don't know. Maybe with, once I get the door stuff settled out, maybe then I'll feel better. But then after the door stuff is done, that's hopefully when I'll get, start getting the siding redone on the house. That's gonna be the biggest project yet. I don't know yet when that's gonna start. I'm not sure when they're gonna be able to get started. 
But yeah, that's coming right behind the door project. I kind of thought the door project would be done by now because I'm, I'm naive and foolish and I actually had a sense of hope that maybe I thought it's a door. How, how hard can it be? You take one rectangle out and put in another one. How, how much trouble could that possibly be by, you know, I was wrong to think it was going to be quick and simple and, you know, problem free because nothing here ever is. But at least I'm not alone. Most, most homeowners go through this crap. It's not just me. So, uh, we're standing in my bathroom and it's late and I still have to brush my teeth. I really hope though that you had a good day. I hope you enjoyed my Fiestata video. Yeah, I, I really want to redo it. I, I'm sitting here like, my older son loved it. He ate like half of it. There's some of it still in the refrigerator. He'll probably eat it tomorrow. But I really want to make it again. I want to go back to the store and get all the stuff again and redo it just to see if, you know, taking out the salt and um, not using as much of the taco seasoning makes it taste exactly like the fiestadas we had when I was in school. Because I'm so curious to see. Because I, I want to taste it. I haven't had that in so long. I haven't had that since I was in eighth grade. So it would be awesome. Because at my high school, they didn't have that. But at my, actually, at my high school, we had really good food. The food, the, the cafeteria food was really good. Now, but it gets better every year. See, the, it, when you come in in the ninth grade, you go to lunch last, and every year, 10th, 11th, 12th, you get bumped up. When you make it to 12th grade, y'all are the first ones in, you get the freshest of everything. So by the time you get to 12th grade, everything is good, like the tater tots are fresh. They had the best tater tots, oh my God. They were so good, they were always perfect. And they only got better every year. And they had these little mini pizzas that you could get for a dollar at the cafeteria and they were so freaking good. They were just the, like the perfect size for lunch. I would get a little pizza and then maybe a little thing of tater tots and a drink and it was like the perfect lunch. I miss those mini pizzas. They were really yummy. It was kind of like the French bread pizzas, but just, you know, like round. Oh man, they were so good. Like I, I hate to hear, you know, my kids talk about lunches at their schools. They go to two different schools. And they talk about how bad it is. It sounds worse than prison food, what they feed them now. It sounds awful. My, my older son was telling me, he said, you know, the other day we had we had a lunch and it was like a pressed beef disc. He said it looked like a hockey puck on a plate with some clear viscous liquid that I think was supposed to be some kind of gravy, but it just looked like some kind of gel, like hair gel. He said, I couldn't eat it. It was disgusting. It smelled bad. And it was nasty. And you get that with a couple of pieces of white bread. And that was their lunch. It's like, I am so sorry. He Sometimes he'll take his lunch. Now, my, my younger son, he packs and takes his lunch every day because he cannot stand the lunches at his school. He said they are just disgusting. So he always packs lunch. But he's upset right now because he likes to take a Capri Sun, you know, the little pouch drink mix things. You can't find them anywhere around here. Like, nobody has any drinks in a pouch. Like, I, I've looked for Kool-Aid. I've looked for Capri Sun. They're just not available anywhere. Um, and he doesn't like juice boxes because they're tiny. And he said, Mom, that's what little kids bring for their lunch. I can't take a juice box to school. So, I have found a few of those, but he didn't want those. He said, Mom, that's for little kids. I don't want that. So, he does also take a, a bottle of water with him to drink. Um, I think their water fountains are still closed because of COVID and all that. So they have, they have to bring water to drink. But the other day I was at Walmart and they had these, this box of pouches and it was Honest Kids Fruit Punch or Cherry something or other. And they were outrageously expensive. I'm like, well, I mean, it's better than nothing. You know, at least he will have something to put in his lunch to go with his, his lunch. Um, he tried them and said they were disgusting. And I said, aren't you being a little dramatic? Because he, he does tend to be a little dramatic sometimes. I tried one. They taste like pond water. They are truly gross. I couldn't drink it. I spit it out. It was so disgusting. It And it's not that it had gone bad or anything. No, it was fine. It wasn't bad. I mean, I know sometimes they get mold in them. Uh-uh. No, it wasn't mold. It was just truly gross. It tasted like water out of a mud puddle. Dyed red. It was nasty. 
Well, I don't give a crap how healthy it is. If it's if you can't even drink it because it's so nasty, what good does it do to be healthy? Because he's not going to drink it. So now I have several pouches of Honest Kids sitting in the refrigerator. I don't know what to do with them. Because nobody here likes them. My older son tried them and agreed they are disgusting. They are truly gross. Um, I don't know. I continue my hunt for Capri Suns. It's just random stuff that every now and then there's just random shit I can't find. Cat food is, canned cat food is hard to find. When I find that, I stock up, which is probably part of the reason why it's hard to find because everybody else is doing the same thing. But I got to look out for my cats. You know, I'm going to make sure they got got their treats and their, their, their yummies. But that's it. Um, how much longer is my son going to have braces? I keep, I keep feeling like he's had braces forever. Like it's just been forever. He got them right around the start of the pandemic. So it was March of 2020. So it's it's been almost two years. And they said he would have to wear them about that long. So was that right? March? No, no, no. It was after that. It was after March that he got them. I'm thinking it was on over in May because he was in fifth grade and they did this really sad drive-through graduation. It was very depressing. We had to drive through the bus parking lot in the back of the school. We couldn't even do it in the front where it looks pretty. No, we're back there in the, the bus parking lot with the dumpster and trash everywhere. And it just looks gross. But like, y'all couldn't at least pick up the trash that's blowing around everywhere out here? It was sad. It was the saddest little parade you ever saw in your life. And the poor teachers, bless their hearts, they did the best they could to try to make it, you know, really nice. But it was just depressing. <laughs> I think he got braces right before that. So that that was in um, like the end of May. So it must have been in May that he got them because he was still showing everybody like, I got braces, I got braces. So I guess it was May. So he's got a little longer to go because it's January, yeah. But hopefully he'll be getting them all soon. I really hope so. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, there's not really anything else going on. It's very quiet. It's very nice. And, uh, I'm going to brush my teeth, take my vitamins and try to get some sleep at some point. So thank you so much for being here. I know I complain a lot and, but I, I feel like I'm not, I'm not the type to complain about nothing. I mean, I, I, I know some people are. And I know there are customers that no matter what you do, they're going to complain. Nothing's ever good enough for them. I'm not one of those people. I'm really not. I'm, I'm pretty calm about stuff. You know, it has to be monumentally bad for me to complain. I consider the door situation to be monumentally bad. So I'm not going to stop griping. And it's not slander. Somebody said I was slandering the company. No, I think you need to look up the definition of slander. I'm not spreading untruths about anyone. This I can back up everything I said. It's this is this is just 100% awful. Everything about my experience with this company has been awful. So I'm not going to shut up and go away just because they they would dearly love for me to shut up and go away. But I'm not going to shut up and go away. So, but I will let you know what happens in the morning. Hopefully, the guy will come look at the door. I'll let you know how that goes. And now I'm going to do my other stuff and go to bed. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again soon.